Okay, so I'm sure you heard the stories and I know you saw people on the dock talking about how mind blown they were by your verse on Life's a Bitch and having no idea who that was. Yeah. How did you end up on that song and why weren't you credited? No, I was credited on a song, on an album I'm credited. Yeah, and... yeah the liner notes, but... <laughs> well, um, I was on a doc as well that he put out, uh, Tom is Illmatic. And um, it was fairly new. Like, I had no um, premeditated thoughts to be on an album. It's, it's just that I befriended him at the time that he was creating the album and I was there uh, being supportive. And I guess that was the last song. And we was in the studio and... um. I heard the beat and I was just in my own zone and he loved it. He like, yo, do that. I need you to get on that. And I was like, yeah, get out of here. Cause you know, he's, he already had uh, uh, a halftime out, which was crazy in the streets. Um, you know, and I hopped on it and from there, there you have it, you know? So we were, we were both making our rounds at the same time. This is his first album. Um, I'm, his, I'm his wingman. So it was cool. It was cool. So what's your current relationship with Nas? Um, he there. He's doing him right now. Of course, he, he he's a couple of levels higher, which he should be. Um, and I'm still doing me, but we still converse periodically as should, you know. It's, it's, it's all love. It's always gonna be love in, in my uh my square. That's all I deal with. Yeah, I mean, you guys did a lot of things together, and you had the farm. And so I've always been curious, what happened with the farm? Was it meant to be an experiment, or did things just not go as planned? You know, had such a huge buzz, opening up for the No Way Out tour and things. Right, right, right. Facts. Um, well, we both had individual careers and everybody's careers was doing good. And I guess it was something that was thought up uh, on my album. Actually, on the More Money, More Murder, we decided to like form a firm group. Um, when we did it, it was it was great. But it was a lot of things going on in the game at the time. You know, the East Coast, West Coast beef was was popping and at that time. Um, everybody got, you know, managers and, 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 and entourage. So there was a lot of cooks in the kitchen and we do, it was just so much that after we did it and with the experience, we all just went back to our own, uh, corners. Like, all right, do you, I see, all right, I'm gonna do what I've been doing. You know what I mean? But it, it was good. It was a great experience though. Okay. So now everybody's older things have changed. Is there any chance that that would happen again? Um, I would love I, I would love for it to happen because you know it's always great to see things 360. Um, um, I mean I'm open for anything, you know. So my door is always open. So if it do happen, I'm with it. Okay, so I want to talk about you know your first few albums. You were bouncing around, labels folding, and and in retrospect, how do you feel like all of that impacted your career? Um, you know, when I think about it, it's like being a, um, an orphan, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you bounce from home to home looking for that love because your original parents, is, you know, is not there. And that's how I felt when I first got on the label that I was on. I didn't know anything about, you know, labels folding and mergers and things of that nature, but I learned fast. Um, so I, I did travel a couple of labels, but what I noticed is, you know, me sustaining and maintaining was off of my talent, right? Because that's what kept me above water is my talent. And I never really got, I never got dropped off a label or anything. And I heard about these horror stories, like, yo, they'll sign you for a tax write up, yo, they'll lock you in. If you don't do this, you'll just be locked in for the rest of your life. I mean, I've been blessed to actually go from these labels and labels, though it may seem however it may seem, but I have got a fresh start and was able to do what I had to do. Uh, did it impact it? Of course, because, you know, with a foundation, you're able to grow properly. Without a foundation, you're looking for, for that love. But, um, I'll do it all over again, honestly, because I'm I'm in, I'm in a great space. Like, because, you know, uh, to really just be in your lane and coast, that's really the key, right? I'm not chasing nothing. I'm just I'm just doing me. And that's the beauty of it all. Yeah, I think that's really, really important to note because you, you never went anywhere. And it definitely seems like there's been a heavy resurgence to your career, but you didn't go anywhere. Um, right. There were some silent periods, though. So... Right. What was going on in that time and what prompted you to come back through swinging the way you are now? Well, uh, of course, we all, we, all, we we like snipers. We're just waiting for the, the right time to pull the trigger for the target. And then, you know, like the music fluctuates so much. The sonics go up, it go down, it goes to the East Coast, West Coast, to the South. It was just going around the world. I'm like, oh, when I'm going to pull the trigger, right? Uh, do it all. What kept me grounded was, you know, I kept putting music out um. And I was just, I was just actually just trying to find me at the time. You know what I mean? Just trying to find me. And 
when the time the doors opened up, I was just prepared. Honestly, I think I put out a book out in 2015. And oh, I went independent actually in 04. I went independent um 04, 05, 08. I dropped several albums and it did pretty fair in the independent market. And um that definitely kept me busy and kept me afloat. And I was just by me doing that, I was just always prepared for like the right times, right? But also think about it. You had digital, do you, you know, then you had first you had the, 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 the vinyls, cassettes, and the CDs and digitals now streaming. It was just so much, right? It'll wear anybody out. But <laughs> I guess, you know what I'm saying? Like if you see, you see a target and you see some light, you keep pushing. Yeah, I was actually getting ready to say that. Um, and I actually will we'll, we'll kind of get back to the, the changes and the way things going. But um, over the last few decades, rap has gone through a lot of changes. Um, but recently, it seems like there's been a reemergence of true lyricism. As someone right. who's been known as a great lyricist, what do you think about this? Um, I, I think I think it's great. I think it's I think it's needed. You know, with lyricists come come substance. I'm not knocking anybody else, but I know with, with how I was raised. Right, those that don't have parents in the house is like the music raised you, right? It taught you a lot of things. So lyrics do that, you know, structure, substance. And I think I think it's great for those that still have the love for it, honestly, to be honest, like to have the love because you can look at this totally as a business now, really just go and do do whatever and, and really don't have to input a lot into it to get a lot out, right? So we really but so those that got love for it. It's great because I'm from that cloth and I love to hear things with substance because it actually it, it's, it lasts the test of time to me. Like it's, it'll be around for generations and decades and centuries to me. Who are some of your favorites right now? Right now, um, as far as the new cats out, uh, I like Lil Baby. Um, I always I always like, to me, I still like the Drakes and, 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 and J. Cole and... Um, uh, um, who else? Kendrick is, is great. The new album that came out, Love, Pusha T, you know? So it's, it's still those with that substance that I love, you know what I mean? So, okay, we're going to go back to the technology that you mentioned a few minutes ago. How has that wave of new technology influenced your current work and your work ethic? Well, it, it didn't influence me, right? Because my work ethic is going to be my work ethic, right? Right? I always still think putting out too much can saturate but like I said when you're looking at a business model it's great to, to put streaming to keep the streams going and just keep putting out music um you know it's still something behind that streaming I'm not sure of because we don't know what to I still I know what streaming is but I really don't know and I'm like wow you get paid so little on so much of amount of streams but I'm still learning that because it's fairly new but I think it's I think it's always good to for anybody just to move at their pace and and, and 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 make progress, right? I just feel like that. I mean, of course, it has to make sense. If you want to be in a business. This is a business still, so you still got to work towards uh, meeting certain goals. But uh, I mean, for me personally, I'm I'm not gonna oversaturate. It's just me. I mean, for those that do it, that's great too, because it's a great thing for a money maker, you know. So. Okay, talking about money, uh, quiet money direct, yeah so many things on there. It feels like this like high-end bodega. How right. did you get into sparkling wine, sneakers? Yeah, all, I mean, there's so much on there. I know, right? I mean, you gotta, you gotta expand, you gotta do things. And, and then so many artists raise the ball. I mean, music is a, is a beautiful way to segue into so many other things. And I think um, I just wanted to expand my brand, right? What I really live and, and, and my lifestyle. And you know, I love I love getting fly, and I, I had to come out with a sneaker. You know, um, though I slowed down with the cognac and 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 and, sh and the champagne per se. The wine thing is a beautiful thing for a person of my age. So I said, let me know in that. I can drink my own wine, wear my own sneakers. You know, I can I can put my own merch out. So it's basically direct. I'm dealing direct to customers. So um, I'm gonna try it all. It seems to be working. Everything's always sold <laughs> out. <laughs> Okay, well, let's go back. Do or Die is a classic coming up on 27 years since its release. And I will tell you, when I was trying to find a vinyl of it, because I'm not going to make you feel old, but I was not really old enough to go buy my own things when it came out originally. Um, <laughs> so when I was Googling around trying to figure out how I can get a vinyl copy, I had to pay about $100 on eBay to get it. Are you serious? Yeah. Serious. And and I actually I have it right here. Like it's all look like somebody chewed it. But I paid a hundred dollars for this. 
And oh. that's the okay. same thing I paid for an original pressing of Tito Fuente's El Rey Bravo. So just to give you an idea of how it's being yielded so timelessly. So given all of that, you know, what was the process of creating it? Were you just going in hungry and ready to rhyme or was there some strategy like, you know, I know this is going to hit? Nah, no strategy at all. Um, I just went in there swinging, trying to figure it out, right? I kind of really just learned um, the structure of songs, right? I probably had like 12 rhymes, right, written, and but yet a song take three uh, verses and a, and a chorus. I'm like, oh, wow, wait, hold on, you know? So um, I felt the waves going in, but once I got, got into the groove of things and things started going, I was like, okay, this is good. I can do this. And I just started just going off, you know, things that I've been through and, and others around me been through and just 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 wrote like I was like a, a news reporter or something. <laughs> That's what it was. That's interesting. What what uh what song from that album was like the one for you when you finished it and it was like this is it? Honestly, I could never say one because I never could do that. That's doing a, a injustice, right? Because each each song is is is, is a newborn, right? To me, is that my phone? Yeah, you just uh, went off. Look like somebody might be calling you. Sometimes it'll do that. It'll turn your camera off. But you're back. Yeah, I said each song was like a like a newborn, right? So each song you got. Um, give me yours. Uh, rather unique, more money, more murder. Sugar Hill, um, whole happy jacket. They all had a life of their own. Honestly, like I, I kind of, for me, just really put my my best foot forward for my first album. I think it was a great thing, and it's such a short window. I think it was a great thing. Great thing. Other rappers definitely respect you. True hip hop heads always include your name in the conversations, but overall, we don't hear your name as often as we should. How do you right. feel about sometimes being left out of the legend conversations? Um, to me, that's day laws, right? And then I know <laughs> that's not crazy, right? It's day laws, right? For 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 the for the for the for the listeners. And secondly, um, everything has its course in this time. My, my battery was dying, so I got to charge it up. I oh, okay, think. cool. That's what that was. Oh, glad you figured that out before I lost you. Yeah, let me cut this light on because it's dark over here. So yeah, so. I think in due time, you know, as 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 the lifespan of, of hip hop grows, you know, they 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 hear about me and know what's going on, you know. What do you think your legacy will be? Great lyricist, a representative for for the culture, um um um, just one of the greats. I know I'm one of the greats though, because those that's great. I tell you, I'm one of the greats. So I know, you know, it is what it is, right? So. I know it's, it's, it, this is a business at the same time. I always know that this is a business. And with a business, you know, these big machines put money and they want to generate their money back. And um, why they do that, they would have to build the person that's involved in that business structure. So I, I, I know the dynamics that come with it, right? So mind you, we go all the way back to me saying I never had a home. If I had that home, I, we all would be on that level, right? But they these, these that's on that level, they definitely had that home and, and, and they earned it as well. Let's not get that twisted. But with that pushing and that backing, you're always going to shine. So for me, even being spoken about the way I'm being spoken about, off of sheer talent, without the big machines that propel a person to, 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 them, to them heights, I think that's an accomplishment within itself, honestly. Yeah, definitely. It's always good to be respected by your peers. So yeah, I know that's got to be something. That's facts. That's facts. I'm going to jump off a little bit from music because I was on your Instagram just kind of scrolling through and I saw you recently posted a video of yourself getting like a facial and uh, definitely uh, seem to prioritize taking care of yourself. It's a lot of conversation. Of, wow, you look so young. You look the same. And things like that. Um, right. You do other things on there too, right? Why is it so important for you as a Black man to showcase self-care? I mean, I mean, health is wealth. Honestly, as we get older, we understand the proper things to eat and and, and and hygiene is these are these are facts. And when you have kids, you want to pass these, th these things on, right? Because it just it preserves you. It, it, to me, it preserves me when you take care of yourself. Self love is always beautiful because once a person see you take care of yourself, you know that you'll take care of them, right? That's how I judge people. If you take care of yourself. That means if I'm in, in in your in your cipher, I get taken care of. You know, not just even. Um, physically, just how a person think and how a person move and how a person just deal with, 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 with spirituality and things of that nature, you just can tell the fabric of the person they are. 
I got like a you know cipher of self care. That that's that's really dope. Um, yeah. All right, so Doa died too. You were spitting on there. You got the features. Everything felt so new, but there was this deep nostalgia. You know, right. take me inside this process. Were you nervous about naming it after that album? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't get. No, nah, I don't get nervous. I, I don't think I don't get nervous. I mean, of course, I'm human. In certain instances, I get nervous, but with music, it's an art. You know, it, it can get rejected now and get praised ten years from now. It's weird. It's like it's like really painting, right? Like so. Um, me was just picking up where I left off at, I think, um, and just really still expressing new emotions, new feelings, and and packaged my thought differently, right? Because my thought's still the same, just repackaged, right? Because it's just about survival. It's about always um, thinking before you move. It's always about having an end game, right? That's That's been my whole spew from the beginning to now. So basically, I just repackaged it because I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm putting it out in another uh, era, but it's V-Packers, that's all. It's retro, but coming back the same and a little more potent. And I just added a little more because my dialogue got a little swifter and my, my mindset got a little swifter. And, and so, uh, you know, I just packaged it different. And hopefully, and, and it got the results that I, I, I expected, right? And I didn't have to switch myself. You know what I mean? I didn't have to change. My integrity, I have to do anything. I just remain repackaged and like, okay, cool. It worked then, it's working now. So now I just got to keep on cons consistently with that same zone. And that's what I'm I'm branding myself for, you know? Yeah, I don't think you, I, I can't off top think of any other artist who puts out an album, a part two, almost 30 years later. And it feels like it could have just came out, you know, two years after it. That's so crazy. It's really yeah. interesting. That's real. So what prompted the limited release vinyl? Um, the limited release vinyl was a uh, business structure that I hope worked. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> I hope it worked. We trying to get some paper out here at the same time. Nah, but it's a limited. Like, you know, vinyl was for my era. So we figured like, you know, it's still, it's still a necessity now, right? In 2022, vinyl is still a necessity. But, you know, it was big back in the 90s and the 80s. Vinyl, like, wow, like a piece of, piece of history, right? So I just wanted to put a limited edition out there. And those that get it, got it, and um, keep moving. That's it. No, that's real. It's not coming back. <laughs> it's not coming. It might. I don't know. But I'm not thinking about that now. That train left the station. Yeah. I'm trying to come on to the next. No, I'm going to feel a little played if it comes back because I already got it. I got on there real quick when you said Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> nah. Something might different. Come back. <laughs> so, all right. You, you kind of you gave me the idea that you may not have an answer for this question earlier, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, okay. Which one of your songs defines you the most? Define me the most. Wow, I'm telling you, uh, define me the most would, would be would be Sugar Hill and Rather Unique. I think, but when, but, but when you say which song, I have a slew of songs. So you said I can not even, but all of them really, because like we all made up of different parts, right? You got the yin and yang to everything, right? So we got the good part, the bad part, the indecisive part, the curious part. So, um, all of that. And one, right? Each song showed you a part. Of, I don't know. I couldn't tell you because some days I'm, I'm like this. Some days I'm militant. Some days I'm like, let you figure it out on your own. Some days, you know, I want to be preacher Earl. I don't. So, and I put all of them, all of them thought processes in, in every album. But initially, when I first came out, of course, Sugar Hill and Rather Unique because I just spoke like I'm Rather Unique, and Sugar Hill was taking the bitter with the sweet, and I just wanted to be on top of everything from all the, all the shit I've been through. Um, and 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 this one, this this Thor Die Two uh, album, just the will was really just the will of life. Everything three sixty. So that 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 was the first single I put out um, with Jaheem, and I just felt like that represented the A now, right? That represented me, how I felt in that particular time and moment. I was just spitting on just life itself, and 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 how one should move if he want to have longevity. No matter what you do, I'm gonna fuck with. I mean, I don't know if it curse, but I don't care what you do in the streets, in business, in corporate America. You gotta move a certain way, right? You can't please everybody, but you gotta please yourself and those that gravitate towards you. It's a great thing. Hopefully, more than less, but as long as you're true to yourself, it's cool. All right, so you know you're you're an OG. What advice right. do you have for young rappers who are primarily focused on lyricism? The young rappers that's focused on lyricism. Mm, I don't know. Put your best foot forward and just keep keep sharpening your sword, right? Like just, just 
it's just it's not even about being the best. It's about being the best of you, who you are. Just do what you do and just keep on elevating. That's it. Like it's elevate. You know, many come few chosen. Just get in where you fit in and do you. What do you want to see happen with the music industry? Say that again. What I, what I want to see happen? Mm-hmm. I want to see a lot happen, right? With the industry. No, nah, I do. I, I I I think. Well, we do. I do. You know, we do got Astra. And we got like pensions. That's one, right? We kind of got pensions. I don't, everybody not probably signed after. You know, thank God that I am. Uh, um, you know, just pensions and and I don't know. I've just been thinking so much for for artists like a fund for for medicare i don't know it's just because it's this really like a union right now it's a co like so we gotta each one help help each one out right and we gotta think future because it's gonna be here forever now so this, you understand hip-hop is only what 50 years old if that if that right because it's been out for a while but 79 was the first album that came out yeah so it's 50 50 years um it's still still young so i'm just thinking about things like for the next 50 years how can we help the artists coming behind us we're around the board like because i know a lot of artists get stuck when it comes to medical things when it comes to you know just taking care of your family especially when you can't hit the stage no more and do things like it's that serious right so we gotta get out of i know it came from the street but it went to corporate so now we gotta really bring a full fledged and like okay now we gotta take take it beyond corporate and and really like set 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 the artists up for you know not not for failure but for really for real success and longevity for the family structure and all that like it's big money in it right i'm am i wrong i'm just there's so much money in it why why we can't right it just makes sense but i, I don't know why it hasn't transpired yet it's just, just i don't know that's really an interesting point that you bring up because I, I that's an, a thought I always have. Like, why isn't there, you know, a general union that has the medic, Medicare or, you know, some kind of funding for that and, and a pension? So it's really interesting that you say that, that that's something that you'd like to see. Right. So do you have any bucket list items or have you just done everything that you want? Man, I'm happy. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 of course, for my age, I've been through the real eras of life, and we know the eras is not like is is, is under a rock. We talking about from the, the crack era to all kind of eras of just life itself. So I'm happy here, and things that I have achieved, and I did more than I expected. So the bucket list has been done. I done mopped everything up. <laughs> Anything <laughs> else would just be a blessing or a cherry on top. But for now, I carry the torch. I think, well, I did it to my best ability and I, I try to represent, I try to stay out of the, the bullshit. I try to stay away from the drama. I try, you know, I try, um, not that I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it, it's that I've seen it all my life and it's easy to get lost in it, you know what I mean? And it's like, we add so much value to, to, to not just the fans, but I'm sure when you become an artist, you know, your family look up to your friends and you just want to carry on tradition, like the first rap I ever wrote, and I try to live by that. I just want to carry on tradition. Um, I know the pitfalls is out there and all that. I know the haters out there, but when you built, you built for it. So move as best you can, and when you face to face with it, just, just go to war. But the best thing to do is try to avoid it, so.